So Rajiv ji, I find that the notions of feminism in Western philosophy is starkly different from the Dhamic philosophy. Let me just quote that. So, the biblical notions of gender differ from the Dharmic notions very centrally. Eve is created from one of Adam's ribs and this happens after Adam already exists by himself. That is, woman was derived from man. A competing story in Genesis 1 has them created equally. The first human pair in Sanskrit narratives, Yama and Yami, were co-created as twins. Yami, female, had her own powerful identity which is not subservient to Yama, male. Shiva, masculine and Shakti, feminine, are often depicted as co-dependent and inseparably intertwined. Indeed, the entire cosmos is conceived of as Shakti or female energy. But despite this, nowadays Hinduism is framed as a religion being unfair to women and West as champions of feminism. And I think the leftists in India have also managed to get a lot of women on their side. So how did this get misconstrued? You know, we're talking about digestion and yeah. how the digestion gets distorted and turned against you. Look up one of the pioneers of Western feminism, a lady who's still alive, she's, uh, she's in late years, Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem is a pioneer of Western feminism, one of the pioneers. She came and spent time in India. Oh. Uh, she was in an undergraduate and she had some uh, uh, problem, personal life problem. And she decided to leave and came to India. She lived in uh, actually uh, J.C. Kapoor, the late J.C. Kapoor's uh, farmhouse. Uh, she came and stayed there. J.C. Kapoor was my friend oh. until he passed away. The movie Monsoon Wedding was filmed in that farmhouse. Okay. So she came and stayed there. And so, even J.C. Kapoor told me a lot of things about Gloria Steinem. But you can find in her biographies, in her books, her love for India. Mm -hmm. She came and she became part of a women's movement in India. And she, she was surprised and she was writing back articles to her co uh, college magazine. And she says, it's very interesting that we don't have this in the West where women are empowered yeah. and they're going for long march. Yeah. You know, and they are going for activism and this is a very campus kind of a thing. There, there was Gandhian marches, various kinds of marches going on when she was here. So she got this idea from India and she inspired, it inspired her. In fact, later she wrote that my life changed from before India visit to after India visit because of what I saw the women of India doing. So this is very interesting that even a pioneering Western feminist got so much inspiration from here. Right. Yeah. So, the, so, but our, uh, the feminists have denied all that yeah. and, and the role of Ford Foundation is very important okay. because Ford Foundation started funding, uh, they, they wanted to empower villagers against urbanites and this caste against that caste, they started yeah. funding all these studies. Ford Foundation uh, started out after World War II, okay. it was decided that you know there is no more British Empire, so okay. who is going to do the social engineering? Okay. Who is going to do the colonial management of those people? They are all, all over the place now. They are getting one, one country after another is getting freedom. So who is going to, how we protect Western supremacy? And the Soviet, Union, Soviet camp is there. Okay. So they are going to make them into Marxists and communists also. So what do we do? So Ford Foundation, there were some meetings where Ford Foundation, uh, FBI and the precursor the, uh, or to the CIA. The CIA was not formed but a prior organization. They had some meetings in which it was decided that we should start for our own foundation should go all over the world right. and we should fund and nurture the leftists rather than losing them to the Soviets. We will nurture them then, then we will know what they are up to and we can even guide them and rather than hating us, they can hate each other. Wow. So, so it was very successful yeah. because rather than them uh, then creating an anti-American revolution, right. uh, we are funding them and we will become friends with them. We let them criticize America also up to a point. Up to a point. So it looks like authentic. Right. Okay. So the Ford Foundation, I mean it, the money is from a capitalist Ford company yeah. and it's from United States, no secret. Yeah. No. They did not use any secret and said, oh, we'll hide our identity. It is very clear who they are. But the power of money and greed in India is such that people yeah, beggars, yeah. beggars. So the largest amount of money in billions that the Ford Foundation has given anywhere in the world is in India. Oh my. They are not successful anywhere else, not welcome in China. So India's program is huge. 
So under the guise of, you know, village development, health development, water development, women's empowerment, under these nice positive sounding things, what they are doing is the kind of message they are giving is all this kind of breaking India message. Mm -hmm. So they, they, gener they were very successful in capturing the leftists, making them very polished, good speakers, articulate, English speaking, globe trotting. They created the last 50, 60, 70 years of the 50, 60 years of this kind of a genre of thinking very successfully in India. So the biggest contradiction of the leftists, you can tell them, is that they're all products either directly or indirectly, they're, they're mentors, they're all products of people like Ford Foundation. Right. So what hypocrisy? Yeah. You know, what hypocrisy? So, you know, Ford Foundation giving them a good life, they're flying them around in first class tickets here and there, taking good care of them. They're all very internationally certified and all that. Right. And they're supposedly championing the poor. Okay, yeah. so that is the origin of the Indian feminism, Indian oh. feminist movement. Now, in terms of uh, their ideology, actually they should be fighting the Christian and Islamic countries for regarding women. Right. Because the role, the, those doctrines have so much against women yeah. embedded in them. None of the, uh, the uh, you know, Jure Christian prophets, the main prophets at least, were women. I mean, they're all it's a masculine, masculine God, masculine yeah. prophets. Uh, the whole thing is a very masculine doctrine. Uh, women, the highest level woman is Mary, who is not De Devi. Yeah. She's not divine. She's yeah. um, she just is important because she is used to deliver the Jesus. That is her role. But she's not uh, herself divine person. Uh, you know, she's not somebody you worship per se. Uh, Catholics. Yeah. Allow a little bit of that, little yeah. bit of that, and Protestants hate them for it because they think it's idolatry and it's a, it sort of a, contaminates the purity of God because you're bringing this woman in there. And this whole idea of uh, original sin, right. original sin is blamed on Eve, yeah. that Eve tempts Adam, yeah. in the, and he does something wrong in the Garden of Eden. He disobeys God, and so they do this, and therefore that original sin, they condemn. Uh, God is so angry. He says, all your children, grandchildren, progeny forever and ever will be condemned to original sin. So all of us are being, being the children of uh, uh, Adam and Eve are all condemned to original sin. sin. From the time we are born, we are condemned to original sin. So the most uh, important problem and catastrophe which Christianity has to deal with is the, is the blamed on woman. Okay. okay, so the women, sexuality, all of that is sort of wrong, evil and all that is, comes from there. And Islam picks it up. Yeah. Also, you know, so these people come with a big hypocrisy to accuse us in the name of some Western fin uh, feminism. Right. This is a hoax, in my opinion. I think the uh, there are serious problems our women face, and we ought to remedy them. We ought to remedy whatever the problems are that women face. We should fix them. Right. But we do not need the West to give us the solutions because we also have good solutions here. Right. We've had a history of our own revolutions, internal revolutions. Uh, internal, you know, new smithies being made, people challenging from within. So we need internal thinking, yeah. not fixed on old ideas. We need internal thinking, but we don't need their help. I also find that uh, homosexuality has never been a taboo in the Dharmic society. Perhaps it was not encouraged openly and promoted, but it was never made out to be sinful as it is construed in the West. But today it looks like India is the one having issues with it. Like at least I find that among my millennials where they say, West is more open to it, but we are not. Transvestites, hijras, are old uh, jati. They're there for in India, very long time. Yeah. There's no taboo, there's nobody yeah. ostracizing, saying kill them, do this yeah. and that, thrown them to death, it all doesn't happen. This is the, the, and you know, the other thing is that what you do in private life, which you're not harming other so people in society, is not a matter for the government or state to interfere. Right. You know, so it's like even if you're not doing your yagna, you are you're not uh, doing some ritual that you are supposed to do in your tradition. It's not my business. Right. So, even if it were wrong, the point is it's not my business. Yeah. Whereas in the West, it's become very important to police everybody else's behavior. Okay. Yeah. Why? See, in the in Judeo-Christian thought, uh, in, Judea, in Christianity particularly, but Christianity particularly and Islam, both of these, let's leave Judaism out of this particular point. Uh, Christianity and Judaism uh, and, and Islam require that all human beings have to conform. Uh, it's not good enough that I did the right thing, I have to make others do the right thing. Okay. 
you know. So I have been authorized and required by God to go and make set other people right. Right. So if I think that his homosexuality is bad, then I have to go and fix them also. Everybody else. Yeah. Whereas in the Hindu, uh -huh. if I feel it's not the right thing for me, it's not the right thing for me. But why should I affect affect what you do? You know. Right. You know. So there is also this idea of. Uh, each person is only responsible for their own journey right. and, I, and there is no collective uh, salvation whereas in Christianity it is collective salvation you have to that's why it is group oriented religion you have a flock flock like a flock of sheep yeah. so you are managing flock okay and it, whereas here in India uh, you, the deity could be a very tiny mandir with just yeah. one person able to go at a time it doesn't even have a room for a thousand people to sit together right. in the traditional sense. It could be a little isolated thing. Whereas in the West, in Christianity, the cathedral is a very big place. Yeah. It's a group event. It's power. It's collective. So, you know, we are all together, collective and uh, Christians. And therefore, if homosexuality is bad, all of us yeah. will go and fix this guy. That kind of a very Christian idea and, and a, and a yeah. Muslim idea. It's not a Hindu idea. Hindu, right. Hindu idea is okay if he is like he is, fine, that's his, his business. Right. And he has to get the counseling, get the advice, decide what he should do to cope with his situation. I don't have any right to go and force an, him to change. Right. Certainly the government has no right to impose legal sanctions against people for private life. But I think now that's what's going on, forcing yes. the government to legalize things and yeah. that's where the protests arise. The Hindu right wing have a problem too. They are kind of uh, colonized. Right. into Western universalism right. and they have picked up these uh, issues uh, which they find embarrassing right. because they have this different anxiety. They right. should be able to say what the hell you know. I mean if somebody is uh, homosexual why is your problem? Right. He, he is what he is why is it your problem? So I think that's where it's arising yes. because of the Hindu right wing picking up those concepts. It looks like Hinduism is always having a problem right. here. Right. I, I have had many arguments with the Hindu right wing people saying yeah. as far as homosexuality, gay, this and that is concerned, it is not a matter for the state. Right. Uh, whether it is dharmic or dharmic is a different issue, but, uh, in, but enforcing dharma is not a state. Uh, right. State has no right. King has no right to enforce dharma right. and his idea of dharma. Because it, to the extent the behavior is not creating a problem in the rest of society. I mean, if somebody is a suicide bomber, it's a social problem. We have to take care of that. Right. Or somebody is polluting the air and doing something wrong, smoking or uh, throwing uh, toxins, he's creating a problem for society. It is the government's job to right. stop that. But if in, if in someone's private life, whatever they're doing, it is not the government's job. Right. There were no kings enforcing laws against gays, gays and all that. So a little bit has to be taught to our Hindu right-wing groups. Of course. Because they are propagating a lot of uh, misunderstood concepts right, right. where Hinduism is being put in the bad light. Right. I find that even colonial invasion and racism is justified in the Western philosophy as being prized to civilized savages. So could you tell us what is the actual motivation for them go going around with these invasions? Well, you know, when ideology teaches you superiority of yourself right. and other people's inferiority and this ideology is sanctioned by God in your book, yeah. You know, it's very powerful, dangerous thing. Yeah. And then if the business interests, the mercantile interests, the commercial interests are to go and invade them, capture their land and do all that, then you know, this ideology gives you a good justification. You can right. do it and say, I'm, I'm killing heathens, I'm killing evil people, you know. And then you start looking for their errors and flaws and blaming it on them. Right. So this whole history of uh, invasions, conquests, intercontinental wars, all of these one people from one continent, you know, let's say Europeans going to the Americas or Arabs going various places and invading, has been justified on these ideas, these religious ideas. So racism okay. has this kind of an origin. Now people will counter by saying, oh, in there wars in India also. Yeah. Point is different. If there is a war between two neighboring countries, it's like, you know, Germany and France having a war. It is not the same thing as uh, you going to another continent with different race, different language, different ethnicity and controlling them. That intercontinental, interracial, interreligious, you know, is more fierce, dangerous because there you can holocaust, you can, you can genocide them. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if these locals, they also realize that we, at the end of the day, we are, we are friends, we are brothers, sisters because we are neighbors. A fight between neighbors is different than a whole neighborhood organizing an army and going to a different neighborhood and attacking them. That's a different kind of scale. So violence is all bad, uh, but it's a different scale. 
and the intercontinental interracial uh, you know oppression conquest genocides done have been done in the name of usually uh, christianity or islam oh usually that's interesting so it's not for spices that they actually came to india well they 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 came to uh, plunder and get money out of it but then they justified it as yeah. you know we are here to govern to for your own good yeah. you know east india company was the world's first and largest outsourcing company like we are doing outsourcing yeah so they were outsourcing to the king that i'll run your rule i'll run your country for you i'll run your kingdom and i'll keep all the taxes i'll i'll have the police i'll have the army you know i i'll do all the i'll control the temples yeah and 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 all this revenue we collect is our fee for for, for managing on an outsourcing basis your kingdom and you just sit on the elephant on the throne we'll give you gun salute and you'll be yeah. looked after and we'll take your son he'll go to cambridge and play polo like that so this in a sense some king sold out right. also you have to yeah put that blame also right our people collaborated and they were they joined hands right. with the british to help the british rule the people right. because they would get stay in power and yeah. get some glory like that's happening now too with respect to sanskrit scholars sanskrit scholars and so many intellectuals yeah. and i don't I don't uh, exempt the current government either and uh, I know that some some people in the in the current establishment are also sold out. Right. The west is very sneaky, very clever about infiltrating. I attended what was supposed to be a closed door meeting at Princeton University organized okay. by some of the intelligence agencies and church and all that on you know what on this rise of saffron right. in India. Yeah. And they were attacking they were they were really condemning attacking Uh, they decided that one group has to stop this attacking mm -hmm. and try to infiltrate right and that group contains some of the same people who 10 years earlier were writing anti rss books and now it started turning pro and they have infiltrated very successfully and some of them are felicitated in in india oh. at the highest levels because our people are just not vigilant Right. We are not even going. Some of the people getting all these awards are actually they have a whole history of being against our culture, right. and now they are looked upon as great guys because they know so much about us. They can also impress us. They can sing bhajans. Right. They can dress in dhau dhotis. Yeah. And they can be very so charming. Right. So we should perhaps learn something from history. Yes, we should so learn something from history. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here, and also hit the bell icon. to make sure you get notified to donate please click this button